So what does 3D actually mean? Turns out, a lot of things. We're in the early stages of generative 3D, with many different approaches and directions it could go. So in this section, I'll talk about these different representations of 3D, how they fit together, and where things seem to be going. Starting with meshes. A mesh is a collection of vertices, edges, and faces that define a 3D object. This is how nearly all 3D is represented in real-world applications today. But it turns out, this is pretty difficult for machine learning models, with most recent 3D research looking something like this, with a machine learning pipeline on this side that produces some non-mesh representation, and then Marching Cubes, an algorithm from 1987, converts it to a mesh. Progress has been very rapid on this side of the pipeline, but not on this side. This creates a bit of a gap between 3D research and 3D applications, and it remains to be seen whether this gap will close or the paradigm will shift entirely. So what about this part of the pipeline? Earlier I mentioned a non-mesh representation. This may be something like triplanes, nerfs, or splats. And in most cases, you can treat it like a black box, labeled ML-friendly 3D. But there's one representation that's stands out, Gaussian splatting, because unlike the other representations, splats can be rendered in real time, meaning that in theory, you could throw away this side of the pipeline and replace the entire 3D ecosystem with Gaussian splatting. So will that actually happen? Probably not. As with most things, the reality is likely to be more nuanced, but for the purposes of this course, we'll be covering both meshes and Gaussian splatting. Now let's take a step back with our generative 3D pipeline. Before this ML-friendly 3D step is often multi-view diffusion. This is where a diffusion model, like stable diffusion, is used to generate novel views of an object, either from source images or from text. This part of the pipeline is very technical and has been changing very rapidly, with some of the most recent approaches skipping it entirely. So for the purposes of this course, I won't be diving deep into diffusion models or specific machine learning architectures. Instead, I'll explain what these pieces are and how they fit together to build generative 3D pipelines. So to recap, generative 3D looks something like this, with multi-view diffusion or other neural network architectures that generate some ML-friendly 3D representation, like triplanes, Gaussian splat, or nerfs, with Gaussian splats being a special case because it can be rendered in real time. This is followed by traditional algorithms like marching cubes that produce the final mesh. Throughout the rest of this course, we'll be diving deeper into each of these topics with hands-on modules where you'll build your own 3D demos.